All right, scholars. So we've been talking about the characteristics of the sun, the earth, and the moon, and some of their movements in our Milky Way galaxy. We know that the sun's gravity is what holds the earth in orbit around the sun. We know that the sun is luminous. That means that it is producing light. Uh, we know that the sun is made of gases. The earth is made of solids, liquids, and gases, and the moon is just made of solids. Now, there are some, some um, hypothesis, hypothesis that the moon might have liquid water on it, but uh, the earth is definitely made of solids, liquids, and gases. Another characteristic that makes them different is the sun is larger, as we've said many times. The earth is smaller, and then the moon is the smallest out of all of them. The moon is one-sixth the size of the earth. Another way of saying that is the earth is six times larger than the moon. But the moon is very, very important to the earth because the moon actually helps us with our tides, the movement of the water, the tides. And we'll talk about that on another video. Another characteristic is that is similar just between the earth and the moon is both of them have rocky surfaces. So the moon has is, is a big rock and the earth has rocks. The moon has mountains, the earth has mountains, the moon has craters, the earth has craters. Those are things that they share in common. They're similar. So if we were doing a triple Venn diagram, these two would be similar, but the sun does not have that. The sun is only gases. The sun does not have water. The sun does not have rocks. The sun, any of those materials there would be obliterated. The sun is so hot. It is so hot to put, to even try to get water close, it would evaporate almost instantly. The rocks would just melt into, I mean, like the sun is so hot. None of those things could even get close to it. So there's similarities between the earth and the moons. Uh, one similarity between all three of them is they're all spheres. You see that this is a small sphere. This is a medium sized sphere and this is a really, really large sphere. So that's one thing that they all have in common. So when you're talking about the sun, the earth and the moon, you have to identify the characteristics of them. We need to know what makes them alike, what makes them different. What things do these two share in common? Is there anything that certain ones share in common? Here's a pop quiz. I just want you to think for a second, just off of what I've told you, is there something that the sun and just the earth have in common? There is, but you have to figure it out. Is there something that the moon and the earth have in common that I didn't mention? There is. And then there's things that are only happening on the earth. This earth where we are at right here, there are things that are only happening on the earth when compared to the other two celestial bodies. The earth only has water, liquid water. That is why it's the blue planet. It is 75% water. It's very important that you understand that. It's very important that you know that. The earth is the only one that has an atmosphere that is able to contain life for us. It's very important that you know that. Has an atmosphere, a hydrosphere, and a lithosphere. We live on the lithosphere. The hydrosphere is the water plane, and then the atmosphere is where the gases go. That is very important that we understand that. So it is very important for us to do our research and learn the characteristics of the sun, of the earth, and of the moon, because when we understand how they are light and how they are different, we're able to come up to scientific conclusions that we'll need to be able to do science all over the place. So scientists, y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for just taking care of our planet. Need you to take care of our planet. As far as we know, we only get one that works and we've got to make sure that it keeps working. We will be back on soon with more amazing science.